Push back. Uh, the inboard engines are started. We're just starting up the outboard engines, and as soon as the Thank engine start for the outboards is complete, we'll be getting taxi clearance and getting on our way. Check start and fuel or engage engine and Tyson schedule. Off and fly over. Brake fan. They're on. Ground idle. Too low. Door warnings. Tested and out. Engine feed pumps. All on. Hydraulics. Uh, check. Electrics. Check. Ground bypass. Ground equipment's clearing. The after start check is complete. Okay, we've got our clearance to taxi. Nose to five, please. That's uh, lowering the nose to our normal taxiing position, releasing the brakes. There we are, rolling okay. forward, hold clear, All checking clear. emergency brakes. And Bill, if we could have the taxi checks, please. Nose of visor. Yes, down five. Checked. Okay, brakes. That check, back at normal. Flight instruments. The cockpit Flight checks instrument. are not actually continuous. They're carefully designed in sections to prepare the aircraft for the next stage of flight. Checked. Trims. Trims, I've checked, set for takeoff. Set for takeoff. And we're clear to line up after the same five. Georgia. We'll have the before takeoff checks, please, Bill. Okay, briefing. Any update? No update to the briefing. Understood. Taxi turns. They're going on. Transponder. That's 5257 and on. Wheel light is out. Off. Out here. And that's the final series of checks before takeoff quite interesting lining up on the runway. We're sitting here on the flight deck 35 feet ahead of the nose wheel, so I have to overshoot the runway centre line somewhat before I commence the turn to line up. A little bit disconcerting until you get used to it. All clear on the approach. Yeah. Prepare yourself now for a sequence of events which are unlike any other flying experience. There we are, all lined up and now standing by for our takeoff clearance from Heathrow Control Tower. Okay, we're cleared for takeoff. Everybody all set? Yeah, all set. Okay. Three, two, one, now. The noise abatement procedure. Three, two, one, noise. Once the aircraft is safely airborne, the engine power is reduced, the aircraft is leveled in order to maintain airspeed. In the terminal area like this, we fly around at 250 knots and we fly around with the nose of eyes and dial and five, keeping a lookout for any other traffic that there may be around. Take off, take off, complete with the nose still applied. At 2% more, please, Bill. 2%. I'll have Compton set up on my side, please. Compton is the name of a radio navigation beacon. And we're just getting to the point now where I'm going to ask Chris to select the nose and visor up, streamlining Concorde for high speed flight. Chris, could you select the nose and yes. visor up now, please? Coming up. Yeah, possibly. The sound level on the flight deck has decreased quite a lot. That uh, airflow noise we were getting before has now diminished. So if not the throttles fully, once the engines have all stabilised, 
Bill Brown will select the reheats in pairs. First of all, the inboards. There they are, just cutting in. We're going to take a timing on that. And the outboards, please, Bill. And we'll see that doing a little blip up and down the scale of the instrument as the shockwave attaches. We're just hanging just under Mark 1, just for 20 seconds or so. And we're just about to go through the sound barrier. There's the shockwave attaching right now. And we're supersonic. No fuss. Approach Bibbit Concord 189 Heavy at 10,000. Bibbit Concord 189 Heavy at all approach, descend and maintain uh, 7,000. Final up and there's the Pfizer down and five. It's okay, the Pfizer is going. So that's the nose and there's the visor going down. And the nose coming down to five degrees. We've got a thousand feet to go to our clearance level of 5,000 feet and the auto throttles increase the engine thrust to maintain that altitude. Speedbird 188 heavy, turn left heading of 3 Heavy means large jet and Speedbird is British Airways. We're on a northerly heading to intercept the runway's directional radio beam known as ILS, instrument landing system. Thank you. Speedbird 188 heavy, just going to maintain 3,000. 3 check. Okay, I'll take the autopilot out, check. And I'm now hand flying it, that's the autopilot out. Speedbird 188 heavy, reduce speed to 210 knots. Speedbird 188, reduce speed to 210 knots. It's a very good auto throttle system, by the way, and I've just demanded uh, a 210 knot intermediate approach speed from it, and the speed's gradually bleeding off now. And we are now established on the extended center line, the runway we're landing on, and also on the glide slope. To glide capture. The overshoot height is 4,000. Chris now changes the frequency of his radio to that of the controller in the tower. Notice tower, good afternoon, speed of Concord 188 heavy, 4 1 right. Speed of Concord 188 heavy, those tower runway 1 right, clear to land, wind 050 at 3. Clear to land 1 right, speed of 188 heavy. So we're cleared for an approach, we're fully established on the ILS, all the radio aids have been identified and no problems at all. Have the gear down please. Speed okay. Four greens. Okay, the gear checks four greens, nose. It's down a green. Checks. Brakes. Checked, they're normal. Landing check is complete. Thank you very much. All the in, on the glide slope, on the localizer. Glide slope and localizer are the two radio beams informing the pilot about his height and position relative to the ideal uh, runway approach. Thank you. 100 feet. 100 to go. Speedbird 188 heavy, decision height. My director's off. 200 feet. 254 heavy, though. Very much around now watch the wingtips. The famous delta wing swirl. Right, Stick forward, please. Sticks forward. Yes, sir. A real grease. Only dollar charge again. One hundred dollars. Ten fourteen about twelve hours. 